Right now, let's talk about actually delivering oxygen to a patient. You can't really hurt anybody with oxygen because we all need it to live, all right? So if anybody, if any patient ever needs oxygen, or you think they need oxygen, or what kind of things could they be complaining about that would cue you that, hey, this patient might need some oxygen? What kind of things would you think? Either something that you see, or something that they tell you, or something that you hear. What do you think? They don't they're, they're, they they're, don't breathe like normal? They're not breathing normal, right. So if they're not breathing normal, they could be breathing too fast, too, fast, too, too slow, slow, okay. Um, how about noisy breathing? And I'm not going to get into lung sounds and stuff like that, but just about noisy breathing, like gurgling <laughs> or wheezing. <laughs> Asthma or something like that, wheezing. All that stuff, how about... Uh, what if, they're, if, if their skin, if I'm breathing normally and my skin is warm, pink, and dry, okay, that's pretty normal. That's just like all of us. What about somebody who is, says, I'm having a hard time breathing, or they're, they're breathing, they look like they're working to breathe, or say their color, if they're not breathing right, do you think their color is going to be normal? No, they might be a little pale. They might be a little ash, ash color. Uh, they might even be a little blue, maybe blue, bluish color around the fingertips, or maybe, maybe even around the uh, the lips, and kind of tingly feeling and stuff like that. These are all signs of inadequate uh, uh, ventilation, inadequate oxygenation of the patient. So those are the kind of things that could cue you. Hey, this person needs oxygen, or a doctor or a physician or somebody says, Hey, get them on oxygen. Starting at the, at the lowest level, in, in the room air, how much oxygen do you get out of the room? Just normal atmospheric oxygen content in the, on Earth, on the surface of the Earth. About 21%. Our atmosphere has about 21% oxygen in it uh, floating around. And, uh, and then it's mixed in with nitrogen and some other gases and stuff. But there's about 21% oxygen just floating around in the room. So if that's not enough, the first level you can, you can kick to is going to be what's called a nasal cannula. Okay. And this is the supply tubing right here. This goes to the Christmas tree. Okay. And then this device is designed to flow at two to six liters per minute. Two to six. This is a low flow device. We're starting in the bottom and we're going to work up to the big time. Okay. So this is a low flow device, a nasal cannula. And um, it's designed to dose at two to six liters per minute, and at two to six liters per minute, it's going to deliver in the four, depending on whose book you read, in the 40%, 40, 44, depending on whose book you read, 44% uh, oxygen. So that's double what you get out of the room with this little doohickey right here. So to hook this up, okay, there's a couple of rules. Don't ever have a dead device, a non-working device, on a patient. That's just an easy way to remember it. So you turn it on, put it on. You take it off, turn it off. That way you never have a non-functioning device just sitting on a patient. Does that, make, does that make sense? That's just an easy rule to remember. So if I turn this on, I already have my oxygen tank set up. Let me turn my guy sideways here so you can see. It. You can come closer if you want, if you want to see. So I turn it on and then I put it on. So what does it flow at? Two to six what? Liters. Liters per minute. Hook it into my Christmas tree. And just a, a gentle push, just rubber. You don't have to like crank it on there. Just a gentle push and it's kind of rubber. It kind of cleans and stuff, okay? And then I'm going to dose this at, say, two liters. How about four? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Okay, this goes in the nose. This little tab right here goes in that little divot on your top lip right under your nose. So I found over time that the best way, and then this little lanyard part just kind of keeps it stabilized, but the best way to put this on is to approach the patient from, say, the belt line heading up to the head. So I set the, this little tab down because it's going to go in the divot, and these go in the nose. And I come out, sir. I'm going to give you some oxygen. You tell them what you're going to do first. I'm going to give you some oxygen, and this should help you breathe a little better. It should help ease things up for you. Okay, so here it comes. It goes in the nose. 
in the divot around the ears. That's what hooks it. Okay. And then you grab the little dealy bopper here and just snug it. You don't have to get it real tight, but just snug it so it won't pop off the ears. And there it is. And then you go like this. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a nasal cannula flowing at four liters per minute applied, applied to the patient. Delivering in the neighborhood of 40 something percent oxygen so that the patient can breathe that in. Okay? Any questions about that? So remember, no dead devices on a patient. You turn it on, put it on, take it off, then you turn it off. Now to take it off, just reverse reverse your way out. We're through with your oxygen. Turn it off. There you go. Easy peasy. I'll pass it around to go on look at this. Next device I'm going to show you is one step up. I would apply in, in, in our practice in EMS, we would apply something like that to, to a patient that is just slightly short of breath or not very short, you know, just a little bit, you know, that kind of thing. Or just like, I feel a little short of breath, we would give them something like that. Or if they don't tolerate a mask. Some people don't like having something up to their face or around their face. They, they get real claustrophobic. They get really wicked out about it and stuff. So some people won't tolerate this. If I want to put this on and they need big, this is for big O2, uh, and they won't tolerate it, then I'll give, them, I'll give them a nasal cannula and crank it up to maybe six liters per minute. Give them, that's the best I can do. I, I need to get something on board. Yes, ma'am? Five minutes. Okay. All right. So this is a non-rebreather. It's designed to flow at 10 to 15 liters per minute and delivers up into the 90 percent, up into the 90s, low 90s, percent of inspired oxygen. So it'll go from 20, 21 percent in the air to up into the low 90s with, that, with this. So you turn it on and then you put it on. So I'll just set it at 10. Before you put it on the patient, inflate the bag. Press your finger on here, and the bag will inflate. All you got to do is get the two walls separated. This is a reservoir bag. The oxygen is going into the bag, and every breath they take will suck out of the bag pure oxygen. Okay. So, sir, I'm going to give you some high flow oxygen. This goes around the back of the head. So I come at them again from the front, coming up. Put it over the nose and the, and the mouth, around the back of the head. Make sure it's situated on there, and there I am. I'm flowing uh, 10 liters of oxygen, 10 liters per minute, through a non-rebreather to my patient, delivering into the low 90s of inspired oxygen. If we can't get a clear seal, what should we do on the mask? Uh, it's got this little, this little uh, aluminum nose piece here. Everybody's face is shaped a little different and stuff like that. Make sure it's situated as, as best as you can. And then maybe you can kind of pinch this little aluminum part around the nose and that kind of helps hold it up tight. And then you can you can uh, tighten these little straps as needed to, to achieve a good to achieve a good seal onto the face. You don't want to have it over tight, like you don't want to leave, you know, indentations or anything like that, but you can tight snug it up. Snug's a good word to use. Snug it up good so that it's up. Um, secure to the patient so that they're getting the maximum uh, oxygen that they, that they can get. And then when we take it off, you never have a dead device, so you take it off, then you turn it off. Sir, we're done with the oxygen. Take it off. And then turn it off. There it is. Any questions?